All right, so let's see if Oscar's really got some kind of plan up his sleeve. I'm not sure. We resume our course through the woods, step by step. For good or for ill, Dolores' voice is our guide. That's definitely for ill. <laughs> Dolores' voice. Oh, well, imagine hearing that the whole time. And then at last we see it, a splash of pink across the forest floor. <gasps> oh, no. Cass. Instinctively, he starts to move towards his fallen sister, and his notion, his motion tugs at our joined <laughs> hands. That moment of distraction is what Dolores has apparently been waiting for. Oh, no. Abandoning us and the remaining half of her ransom gold, she turns to flee. Wow. Go. We rush after her as best as we can. Oh, man. It's not it's so gonna easy as one might think to run in a forest, particularly while, while entangled with another. We could, of course, pause for a moment and remove the silk wrapping, but that would require that we pause. Instead, Callum crushes my fingers in his grip as we attempt a synchronized pursuit. She is one and we are two, and in this terrain, that gives her an advantage. She's going to get away. We're losing. And then, quite unexpectedly, I hear a shout. It's Oscar. Oscar. Somehow or other, he must have gotten himself loose from his predicament and tried to catch up with us, only to find himself directly in Dolores' escape path. He's not bigger or faster than she is. Wait, he really? He's not bigger than her? Uh, I don't know. But he is there, and She's she can't page. swerve away in time. In one desperate leap, he tackles her to the ground. But that does not bring an end to it. Wrestling is not a sport that ever held Oscar's interest. With an angry woman in his grasp, a woman who has no qualms about using her knees and her teeth, he is completely ineffectual. Oh, no. A few painful, for him, moments later, and she has struggled free. But by that point, it is too late. Ah, oh. Oh, my look God. At look face. at her, him, I mean. Callum has a hand in her hair and an arm around her neck. Looks like he's going to go Hulk. <laughs> this is the only payment you'll receive. Her eyes what? bulge as the pressure around her neck increases. Oh, my God. Whoa, this is crazy. This is actually really funny looking, though. Stop. Don't kill her. I told you I wouldn't murder for you. We've caught her. That's enough. A traitor deserves death. So tie her up and bring her back to stand trial. <laughs> Looks like you haven't told them. Her eyes roll back into her head and she sags in Callum's crisp. Oh, her. man. No. She's only unconscious. He takes a deep breath and lets it out. Well... So be it. Tie her up if that's what you want. We'll have to get back to Cass. Between us, Oscar and I handle Dolores' limp body, binding her with a discarded silk scarf. She is not a very substantial woman, more wiry than bulky, and easy enough for the two of us to carry. So, Dolores was the mastermind all along. Could she really have overpowered Oscar and spirited off Cassidy all by herself? I saw them struggling here in the forest. I can imagine she'd get the better of him eventually in a brawl, but disabling him too quickly to cry out? And then dragging the princess away, keeping her hidden? Leading me on a merry mm. dance? Spying on Callum? Setting up a ransom exchange? That's a lot to manage for a rough-spoken girl who's never progressed past the <laughs> rank of Very rough-spoken. <laughs> There's more than meets the eye. There must be more to her story than I'm seeing. Who sponsored her to royal service? Why hasn't she been either advanced or dismissed? She is someone's agent, I'm certain, but whose? And what is their part in this? And yet, Callum insisted that she was working alone, and motivated by gold, not by politics. And the last thing Dolores said was that Callum hadn't told us the whole story. Could she be his agent and turned on him? Oh, man. Seems like it might be possible. Callum certainly is a slippery fellow. <laughs> I can't place my finger on him. That might explain why he was so angry at her for being a traitor, except he said that he didn't know why she hadn't been dismissed either. I may have some questions for that woman when she wakes up, but in the meantime, we have a princess to rescue. We return to where we first spotted that telltale glimpse of pink fabric in the forest. There Cassidy lies, quiet and unmoving, at the base of a tree. Not a fairy tale girl in a glass coffin. This princess's hair and clothes have been snagged by leaf and twig. Her shoes are gone, her stockings horribly stained, and she's tied and blindfolded with more of those silk scarves. Oh. Is she all right? Do you have any heart's horn spirits? Yeah, no idea what that is. <laughs> there is a faint moaning noise and Cassidy's head chips. She's awake. Get her untied and sitting up carefully. Oh. Callum hangs back while Oscar and I help Cassidy to her feet and remove the blindfold. What? It's all right. You're safe now. We've captured the woman who kidnapped you. Safe, but... 
She ducks behind Oscar and raises a trembling hand. He's the one that kidnapped me. What? She's pointing at Callum? Uh Uh-oh. You stole Princess Cassidy. No, not exactly. That is not Princess Cassidy. What are you saying? I would like to introduce you to my brother, Prince Caspian. What? Oscar takes a step backwards, sheltering Cassidy, or is it Caspian? Behind him. You are mad. It was you who attacked us in the garden. Is Callum our enemy, or is he telling the truth? Oh no. What should we do? Um. Choices, choices. I would like to hear his explanation, honestly. Yeah, I'd like to see what his reasoning is. He doesn't is. seem like he's going to attack her right now. It doesn't seem dangerous, and... Well, then again, he did almost choke that girl to death. But... Well, yeah, but he doesn't seem like he wants to hurt his brother Yeah, let's sister. hear what he has to say. I'm kind of curious, indeed. Let's not get too excited here. We're all supposed to be friends. Callum, do you want to explain what in the world you're talking about? You would think with the years I've spent planning for this moment, I would have a better idea of what to say. This isn't how I meant it to turn out. Your prince is right. I did attack him in the garden, but only him. I would never have hurt Cass. I just wanted to talk to him alone. If you wanted to talk to Oscar alone, why did you make me go with you? You really don't remember anything, do you? Wait, hold on. I'm trying to understand. So, Callum, you're saying that that is your brother Caspian? Yes. I am not... And you took her, or or him, from the dance last night because you wanted to talk to her? Yes. Then how did Dolores get involved in this? I left Cass in my room alone. Oh, in his rooms alone, sorry. He has multiple, of course. Ugh, the life of a prince. (laughs) I left Cass in my rooms alone while I waited for the fuss to die down. That thieving page must have somehow found him there and decided to grasp the advantage. I should never have left you alone. What? You're sorry that someone else had kidnapped the princess after you had properly kidnapped her first. You may have found some crumb of courage, but you are still a fool. I was willing to risk anything for my goal, except Cass's safety. What goal? Saving my little brother, who was stolen from me all those years ago. I'm very sorry, but... You're delusional. I am not Caspian. Prince Caspian died when I was a baby. Yeah, Callum, you really haven't gotten to the explanation yet of why you think this is so. Mm. That's what everyone believes. That doesn't mean it's the truth. Oh, he's a conspiracy theorist. I assume there's a story behind this. Why are you listening to anything he says? He lied to us. He attacked us. He forced you. I'm listening to him because I want to understand what's going on. Wisdom before judgment. And whose wisdom do you think you are? What? No, she is right. We should talk about this calmly. Once we all understand what we are what we're thinking and feeling, then we can come to a solution that benefits everyone. But, if you please, I'd like to sit down. Maybe you should be reading that voice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She seems pretty feminine, despite whatever uh, Callum's saying. Of course, you should rest. He gallantly sweeps a patch of grass free of twigs and beetles. You're very kind. Once they've settled themselves, Callum begins his tale. Cass is my little brother, and the closest person to me in the world. All of our other siblings were much older, men in the making. In the meanwhile, our royal parents seem to have little interest in their youngest offspring. I know now why it was, but at the time it never occurred to me to question. My life was the nursery, my toys, my minders, and my baby brother, who trusted me in everything. Then they came and took Cass away. They said he was ill, and that he was coming down with the plague, and had to be quarantined with special nurses. I never saw him again. It was half a year later that they told me he was dead. But if he was ill, and we were always together, Why was I fine? If he had to be confined, why not me? That's it? 
That's your reason for believing that Cassidy is Caspian? Of course not. At the time, that was my reason for believing that life was unfair, and would always be so. I wasn't interested in my new little sister. I didn't want a replacement for Cass, so I didn't think about the princess. But that baby grew older, and still she never came to the nursery. Years and I never saw her once. Sometimes I wondered if I were the one with the plague, who had to be kept away from my siblings. And then I was old enough that my parents were forced to give me my own rooms and full-time tutors. And once you were gone, then they took the nursery for the princess? I suppose. I didn't much care. I was used to it by then. Being shoved aside, out of the way, ignored. It wasn't until a public event when Cassidy was about five years old that I finally laid eyes on the princess. And it was Caspian. Older. Too old for five years and wearing a dress, but I knew his face. She is your sister. It's not that strange that she might look a lot like Caspian. Not similar in some ways. The same face. Look at me. Do I have the same face Cass does? Well, no. No one else saw it. No one else knew him like I did. I didn't even question why he was there. All I knew was that my brother was alive. I ran up to him, calling his name. That was when my father hit me. Oh no, Aww. poor little Callum. That's not cool. I, I remember that. That boy, that was you? They told me he was a thief who snuck in and that he might have carried the pox. Aww. That was why they beat him. Wow, they really didn't like Callum. <laughs> yes, you would remember the beating. Your father beat you? No, he had the guards take me away and teach me a lesson. Once only. That I was wrong, and a fool, and a disgrace, and I was never going to go near Cassidy again. I had no idea. I'm so sorry. You have no need to be sorry. You didn't cause it. You wanted to see your brothers, remember? He turns back to Callum. Your parents treated you unfairly, that's clear, but it proves nothing. You made wild accusations in public, and they did not want the scandal. Considering what it's led to now, it seems they were correct that you would bring them grief. Oh, that's harsh. Hmm. Caspian and Cassidy are different people. Cassidy was born before Caspian died. It's public record. Yes, and for so long, I couldn't understand it. I almost started to believe that I was wrong. Then it all became clear. Caspian and I were nothing to them. The infant Cassidy was the heir my parents had been longing for. I think that baby died, and my wise mother could bear no more children. There could be no further princess. And so, I believe, they chose to switch Cassidy for Caspian and raise him as the heir of Gwellinor. They've done it so well that even he doesn't remember who he really is. Cass. They kept you isolated so that no one would break the illusion, so that I couldn't tell you the truth. Everything I've done was to get you out of their clutches so that you could be free. They stole your life. I'm here to give it back. But I... There's one obvious problem with this whole story. Hmm, I, I think I might know what it is. Caspian was a boy. Cassidy is a girl. You are, aren't you? I am. You can't simply put a dress on a boy and call him a girl. It wouldn't work. Yeah, there's a very um, obvious sign that might be noticeable. And, uh, you know, guessing where we are uh, technologically wise, I don't think that could be changed at this point. Um, <laughs> do you agree? Yeah. Unless there's some kind of magic at work here, maybe. Bind a living thing <laughs> tightly enough and its growth can be stunted. Oh, my. Oh, I, I really don't know how it works, but I'm not sure if it can be that stunted. He looks at his sister and his voice takes on a hesitant tone. They've kept you so isolated, I have to ask, do you know what is different between a man and a woman? Men explore and conquer, women nurture and defend. Okay, that's a pretty big uh, stereotype, I guess, but not what I meant. What I think he's trying to say is that 
men's bodies are different from women's bodies. Yes, that's why women wear gowns. All right, these are very simple uh, <laughs> replies. <laughs> that's true, but it's more a question of what's <laughs> under the gown. Uh, are we going to have to check? <laughs> this is going to be awkward. Have you ever seen men and women unclothed? What? You can't ask a lady a question like that. She can, being a lady herself. <laughs> I, of course I haven't. It wouldn't be proper. In paintings or statues, perhaps? Books of engravings? I would never look at such things. Oh, come on now. That's silly. Not even Sylvia de Gaussier's The Myriad Ways? It's very famous. Convenient, isn't it? That they've sheltered their princess so profoundly. There's nothing unusual about a princess being modest. Yes, but so much so that she can't even grasp the point of what we're asking? What point? Oh my goodness. Oh, for soil's sake! We <laughs> <laughs> We turn to discover that Dolores is apparently no longer unconscious. Still bound, she twists herself part upright to speak. They're trying to find out if you have a tail in front. <laughs> a what? Oh my goodness. How long have you been listening? Oh no, now she's going to know about all this. Long enough, Lady Lackey. I should have shut your mouth permanently. Oh, and then who'd have to take the test? Your noble hands are too pure to carry. If none of you have the eggs, I'll lift her skirt and see if she got them. <laughs> oh, I kind of like Dolores, actually. <laughs> no, I she's still don't like her. She's to the point. But yes. What? N no one is lifting anyone's skirts. It isn't necessary. There are other signs. Mm. Uh... Well, I don't think there's any <laughs> sign more obvious, but okay. I am, after all, supposed to be trained to observe. I set my preconceptions aside and examine Cassidy closely. She has a slim figure and a narrow waist. Her bosom, while quite modestly endowed, has a oh. feminine shape to it. That much could be achieved by a slender dandy in a corset. <laughs> but other features are far more difficult to alter. Oh my. Look at her hands. She has long and graceful arms, but small hands. Men's hands are larger in relation. Really? On, women could have man hands. Yeah. Come on, think of Seinfeld here. <laughs> so uh, the reverse, reverse could be true, just by the hands alone. Come on. Her hands look huge in the picture. Oh, they kind of do, actually. Uh, her chin is smooth and soft and has no hair, and her throat lacks the male bulge. Hmm. <laughs> the male bulge. <laughs> and her voice... That is your natural voice, isn't it? You're not forcing yourself to speak in a high tone? No. You didn't have your voice mysteriously change a few years ago? No? Well, there you have it then. She's a woman. Hmm. I did tell you that. I'm not satisfied until we get a look up front. Yeah, I mean neither. <laughs> but you're Caspian. You have to be. Don't you remember me at all? The nursery. You and I. You used to stand on the window seat and point at things outside. To make me tell you about them. Oh, it reminds oh, me of, uh... Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, my God, son, a yeah. little bit. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah. You like to watch me fire a catapult or spin a top because you couldn't make it go so fast, as fast. Your favorite toy was a stuffed cloth purple dragon. You used to sleep with it. My favorite toy was a little blue bear that I carried around with me everywhere. Aw, it's cute, too. I don't remember ever seeing a toy catapult, and I did not enjoy spinning tops. Well, sorry. Mostly, I like dressing up my dolls and having them act out stories. She walks closer and lays her hand on Callum's arm. I'm sorry, but the truth is, Caspian is gone. I... I'm sorry, he sounds like he was a sweet little boy. I wish I'd known him. I wish I'd known any of you. I was always so lonely growing up. Aww. So you're really Cassidy? I really am. I can see the expression on Callum's face as he admits to himself, perhaps th for the first time, that his baby brother is dead. Then everything, it was all for nothing. Oh, and he's gonna... If he had a board with his parents when he was young, they're probably gonna be pissed at him now. Oh, God. Unless he throws us under the bus. <laughs> or Dolores. Yeah. No. To his evident surprise, she wraps her arms around him, nestling her chin on his shoulder. 
it meant that we got to be together and talk to each other at last. Otherwise, we would still be strangers. Hug me back. Nobody ever hugs me. Slowly, cautiously, Callum puts his arms around his sister. I don't know why our parents treated you so badly, or why they kept us apart, but it was wrong. But I'm an adult now. They can't lock me away. We can start over. She steps away from him, still smiling. What you did, you did because you loved your brother. That's not wrong. Yeah, really sweet. <laughs> Now, since we're all loving and forgiven, how about you let me go? I think not. You are going back to the castle to face trial. I ought to get rid of her right now. It would save trouble. Because I can tell everyone that it was you who attacked Lady Fainting Blossom? <laughs> sure, you would kill me so I couldn't talk, but then you'd have to kill Miss Nosy and Prince Simple too, huh? Prince Simple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Oscar. What? <laughs> was that your plan? Of course not. My brother wouldn't do such a terrible thing. But you, you barely know him. Before, you just knew him as your kidnapper. Now you're defending him. She's certainly loyal and forgiving, considering that she's more or less just met him and he kidnapped her. Really? Exactly what you just said. All right, so I think we'll leave off here. We can either defend Callum or accuse Callum. Oh, oh no. what a choice. Well, this is certainly a revealing episode. Hope you guys mm. like this one. <laughs> one of my favorites so far. I like it. And we'll see you next time. Bye.